Okay, let's do it. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Eleni. I am the Chief Operating Officer of Base Beauty Creative Agency, and I'm so excited to welcome you all to today's event, Beauty Retail Proactive Product Testing Solutions Post-COVID-19. So we have a bite-sized 30-minute event planned for you today, and you are welcome and encouraged to ask questions using the Q&A function that's on the bottom of your screen and we'll be taking them at the end of the discussion. And if we don't get that to them, then we'll definitely find you after the event and follow up with you. And we'll also be sending out an email afterwards with a link to the full webinar in case you wanna share it with your friends. So I'm going to introduce Base Beauty's beauty and wellness experts who are joining us today. We have our founder and creative director, Jody Katz. <laughs> Hi everybody, thanks for coming. And I just wanna give a special shout out to my husband who's um, attending and I think he's attended like every single virtual event that we've done so far. <laughs> and I like made the kids sit with him because I just thought they should do something other than be on video games. So hi everybody. <laughs> hi to the whole Katz family. Um, our design expert, Elisa Vitali. Hi Elisa. Hello. <laughs> our strategy expert, Robin Plackey. Hi everyone. And our PR and influencer expert, Natalie Banker. Hi everyone. So I'm going to set the scene here and Jody's going to share her screen. Okay, here we go. And you know, we really, really do encourage questions. Please, please, please. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today's event was born as a result of an intimate industry executive brainstorm hosted by Base Beauty that happened uh, via Zoom on Friday, April 24th, 2020. And all the attendees participated just with the goal to move the retail experience ahead and to share these ideas with our industry at large. So we were joined by these amazing people, Natasha Kornstein, the CEO of Flushington, Alana Drill Zypher, the CEO of Revive Skincare, Laszlo Moharita, the head of Global R to Ecom and New Business at J&J, &J. Rachel Brown, the Editor-in-Chief at Beauty Independent, Sonia Summers, CEO at Beauty Barrage, Ian Ginsberg, the CEO at CEO Bigelow, Ellen Friedman, EVP at RPG, Dina Bruckman, the CMO at Grande Cosmetics, and our team who's talking with you today. So we came together to brainstorm on the topics, including sampling of the future, um, the retail and the spa experience, and consumer comfortability. Base Beauty also did some research on the retail experience um, by looking at the current landscape and also conducting a consumer survey in April 2020. So um, what we learned didn't surprise us, but it definitely confirmed the importance of the work that we're sharing today. Um, we know that testers are a pathway to purchase. So 93% of female consumers let us know that they do their research before purchasing, um, testing products, reviewing claims, and seeking consultations at beauty counters. The, the fan favorites to test are things like foundations, lipstick, eyeshadows, nail polishes, brushes, fragrances, and moisturizers. Um, we know that testers are considered risky and have been considered risky for years past, even before COVID-19, and dermatologists have been advocating strongly for the abolishment of cosmetic testers and retail services. There's even been some lawsuits against customers contracting um, infections that are linked to in-store testers. Um, and the testers that we see and know in store, um, some retailers have been attempting to provide sanitary options through things like store monitors and single use applicators um, while maintaining those experiential try on moments for consumers. And also there are the virtual testers that we've seen. Um, China is leading the conversation here in the AR and AI technology. So we just had to ask, we, we reached out to our uh, network and we conducted a survey to talk to, this was conducted in April, as I mentioned. So this was at the time when we were talking to those people who were dreaming about returning to shopping for beauty in real life. And we wanted to see how their habits would change after COVID-19. So 86% of our respondents told us that they do test makeup before purchasing, 61% said they utilize in-store try-ons and 76% said they utilize take-home samples. So these are some pull quotes that we thought were really interesting, which talk about why they try products before purchasing. And a lot of it has to do with the wanting to see the color and the shade matching. They like to see how it matches their complexion. They want to see that the coverage feels good, if it feels greasy. Um, they want to see the pigmentation of the eyeshadows, see that it doesn't irritate them. And some people like to do testing for fun. 
So um, as we navigate the post COVID-19 world, the, the consumer's need for safety and hygiene while she shops is only going to be heightened. Um, and this is going to affect how she experiences products and interacts with testers and makes her decision to purchase. You know, we, we saw some more pull quotes about people saying, you never know where the next virus is going to come from. They have no desire to test in store products now knowing that someone else touched it and they don't want anything to do with samples touched by the salesperson. So that's kind of um, what inspired our work. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our founder, creative director, Jody, who's going to kick off the conversation. Great. So, um, you know, we're really, um, we're so invested in this conversation, not just because we're a beauty creative agency and experts in the beauty marketing industry, but because we are the consumer. Um, and everyone on my team, no matter what age they are, um, they're super passionate about beauty and shopping for beauty and experiencing beauty. So we thought um, during our brainstorm with our um, other partners, you know, what does that new store experience look like? Um, so if you're my age, you know what this movie is. <laughs> um, I wish I could see your hands right now. So this is the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise. And like, look at the animation and excitement they're creating at this bar, right? This is like what the whole movie is about. And if you haven't seen it, Eleni, did you watch it? I didn't watch it, but it's on my list for this weekend. <laughs> so if you're under 40 and you've never seen it, please add it to your list. But the reason why I show you this is because we really want to create that level of excitement and animation and energy in store. And um, we, during our brainstorm, someone, one of the teams came up with this idea of a bartender, right? But it's not a bartender for drinks, it's a bartender for product samples. So we were just like, we love this idea and we love the fact that like this can actually sort of help redesign the store experience when we take the focus away from all these individual gondolas or individual aisles and we put in the center of the store this like really compelling beautiful display where um, the team members can work safely and privately behind this glass wall so you can see there's like a glass um, like a huge glass window around her um, and she has access to hundreds or thousands of products that she can sample for you so we really envision this to be like the hub, the center of the redesigned store and become like a whole animation point in a real moment. Um, so I would imagine that you know, we will have some staffers that are as enthusiastic as the Tom Cruise character in the movie Cocktail where they're like really having fun with it and making this um, quite an animation. But there is, these things are super functional too. So we imagine of course that our staffer here is super protected, right? This is not just um, to keep the products clean, but it's also to reinforce and remind the consumer who's shopping that like everything behind that glass wall is safe for her. Um, and she's going to be communicating with customers via um, an app, a, a, an app that the store would create that would allow customers to be wandering through the store, actually click through and select what kind of samples they want the bartender to create for them. And then um, when those samples are ready to go, an alert will come to my cell phone with a text message saying, you know, go to the counter to pick up your samples. And you'll see there's like these little cubbies on the side above the monitors and that's where um, those products will be dispensed. So it's a way to add personalization to the process of sampling. It's a way to add animation to the store. It's a, a way to add excitement um, and to add new technology into the store that we, we currently don't have. Did I miss anything, Lisa, on this? No, I think you covered it beautifully. Um, so this, of course, requires a cooperation between not just the retailer, but also the brands. And we're really hoping that um, post-COVID, we're going to see more collaboration, more um, community of support between brands and retailers, um, perhaps sharing of costs and sharing of resources in a way that we haven't seen before. So Lisa, tell us what's going to happen at Shell. OK. <laughs> Well, yes, it's COVID, um, but honestly, I think we all know that in-store sampling was never, ever, ever, ever a hygienic experience. Um, using a lipstick tube that four other strangers have applied directly to their lips before you is never a risk-free proposition. Um, COVID, though, really is a catalyst for so much needed change. Um, Elisa, before we move off this page, I just want to acknowledge that, like, I, I'm. I'm in this business, I'm a beauty customer forever, and I look at these pictures and I am so grossed out. And yeah, I am really right. grossed out in a brand new way, and I've never been like a um, germaphobic person, but looking at this, it looks so foreign. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe that she's <laughs> using the lip gloss. 
or putting that product on her eye. It really feels shocking now. It's awesome. really, really, really gross. So we know that the customer wants to sample and experience the products before purchase. We know they want to know if the color matches, how much coverage that concealer really gives, how much that or how quickly that moisturizer absorbs, but we're pretty adamant that sampling should be touchless. Um, so at shelf, uh, we imagine we can reorganize the units so that brands can have motion activated sample dispensers like you see here. Um, for liquids like foundations or moisturizers, the customer simply has to hold a paper cup under the shade of their choice and a small amount um, of that uh, makeup is dispensed. She can then use an individual disposable applicator to apply it. It's pretty easy. Um, for things that are non-liquid like lipstick or eyeshadow, we imagine that the motion activated dispenser um, we'll give out samples on clear plastic strips, which the customer can then peel back the cover and lay the product down directly on their skin. So to paint a picture of anyone who's been in a supermarket in the past few years, and when you're walking down the aisle and there are these little red dispensers that shoot coupons out at you, they're like sensor activated and they know when you're there. Um, we think that type of technology would work great for the lipsticks or the shadows, right? To just sort of shoot out one of these um, color samples, you just pull it out and then you're not touching anyone else's sample and no one has touched yours. Right, um, but also I wanna add that because um, seeing the package is also a really important part of the, um, the purchasing experience, um, knowing how large it is, how it might look on your vanity. Um, <clears throat> we think you, the customer still needs to see it. So you see it here behind glass, um, so they can look at it, but they can't touch it. Um, lastly, um, for <clears throat> in-store sampling, customers have been receiving um, packets and deluxe samples for quite some time, um, but it's usually just as a way to promote a, a company's new launch. Uh, but we really see it as a good way to leverage um, hygienic samples as a way for customers to test out products they already want to purchase. So for shade matching, um, consistency, et cetera. Uh, this idea of investing in sampling in a new way, not just for launches, as Lisa said, but as a you know part of your evergreen strategy, I think it's going to be kind of a hard pull for some brands to swallow um, because they're going to have to invest in different time periods or in new ways. But um, I think we really need to look at these as like really big marketing investments that are incredibly important um, and also encourage brands to um, allow free sampling from their websites. You know, so that, um, you know, if I'm knocking on your door as a customer and saying, I, I want to try your product, um, put those products in the mail. Uh, you then have her email address, you then have her address, you can follow up, you can send her a text message, you can actually ask how, which, which shade was right for her or um, if she needs another shade. So we see it as an incredible way to actually have a very personal um, engagement with the customer, even though she's um, asking for sampling, um, even online. Okay, Robin, you're gonna tell us what's gonna happen on staff. Yes, so this was one of my favorite ideas from our brainstorm. We were thinking about how the staff is really the first impression when you come to retail or even a spa, you're greeted by um, a staff member and they are going to look different, right? Their faces are gonna be covered, their hands are gonna be covered, um, which is important, right? We wanna make sure that consumers feel safe, but is there an opportunity to do it in a way that doesn't feel so sterile, clinical, or even scary. So if you go to the next slide, we were inspired by people around the world um, who are being really creative with their face masks. So it got us thinking, can we find ways to inject personality um, and, and branding even into um, the look of PPE? If you go to the next slide, we were thinking about how airlines take something so mundane, like a uniform. Um, it's really the only industry um, that I can think of that does such amazing things with uniforms um, and, and make it um, high-end fashion. So here, um, Delta and Virgin have engaged with high-end designers. Is there an opportunity to have designers reimagine PPE, what the gowns look like, what do they even feel like for the wearer? or if ultimately consumers are gonna to be touched again um, at retail you know, for sampling, what do the gloves feel like? What do they look like? 
Um, and you know, some of these high-end designers and designers in general are already making PPE because to fulfill a need um, and a shortage. So can we get them to reimagine what it looks like? Um, so moving it from something clinical to something more fashion forward. Yeah, Robin, um, I never even thought about the gloves, but the gloves could, those disposable gloves could be branded and patterned and like, you know, you could have a lot of fun with those. Yeah, I saw one for a wedding where the nails were painted. And that was kind of fun. <laughs> Cute. Um, and then also, you know, when we think about, um, again, the staff member with the mask on, we're not seeing her expression. And therefore, you know, it's a little bit less of a human connection. I think we're all feeling that, you know, as we walk in our neighborhoods and are kind of saying hello to everybody, we're, we're losing a little bit of the expression. So um, this was an idea to take a picture of the staff member without their mask on so we can see their smile, feel, feel their warmth. We could also um, have different makeup looks for them. Um, you know, which can change out, which can be seasonal, which can be, you know, promoting a special or a specific product that they love, um, but really allowing the um, customer to interact with the staff member and see what they really look like. And this was an idea that actually hospitals um, in, around the country were using. I love the idea of matching this visual storytelling for each employee to like, you know, the marketing program in the store. So let's say it's like an Urban Decay Day, right? Like here I am in my like favorite Urban Decay look, wearing my favorite Ur Urban Decay products, and it's the photo that I'm wearing the next day. Even though you can't see my lips and you can't see, you know, all the bronzer, or all, all the illuminator, um, at least on my photo, um, you can see what my, my whole look is like. And I think it's also like a really good conversation starter. Yeah, because I think consumers are inspired by the looks of the staff, right? We know that. Um, so here's the opportunity for them to still really show their smart, their um, style. I love this. Okay, so Natalie, what's going to drive people into the stores, right? We've been home, um, you know, in full disclosure, I'm wearing a very nice top, but I'm wearing my leggings and comfy socks <laughs> underneath this. So, like, what's going to get me out of the house and into the store? It's a great question, and it was one that sparked a lot of dialogue when we had our brainstorm session a few weeks ago. You know, for the last couple of months, people have only left their homes on a need to go basis. You know, I need to go to the grocery store to buy groceries, food for my family, or I need to go to Home Depot to buy gardening supplies. But we want, you know, when it comes to bricks and mortar, for the beauty experience, we wanna change that mindset from I need to go to the store to I want to go to the store. So how do you entice the consumer to want to leave the comfort of their home, entice them to go visit the bricks and mortar and um, continue to delight the consumer, ensure that they have a really positive, wonderful experience. So um, definitely a topic of discussion that sparked a lot of creativity and dialogue in our brainstorming session. And we, as a result of that, we have a few ways in which um, we'd like to share with everyone today. So the first and foremost is an in-store loyalty program that is really exclusive to the bricks and mortar locations. So this loyalty program has to be something that has never been seen or done before that really ensures that the consumer is delighted in every possible way. So that can include anything from unique in-store offers or flash sales and discounts, triple loyalty points and for key moments throughout the years, um, maybe exclusive products or kits or bundles that are only available in store and not online. And then we were thinking as well, having these fun, engaging on-site activations. So the moment you walk into the store movie, there's a treasure hunt. And if you find everything on the list, you get this fun prize. Or every month, as part of your loyalty membership, you get this exclusive member sample pack that you have to go visit um, at the bar. You know, <laughs> as Jody had mentioned, when you go visit the bar experience, that could serve service so many different um, purposes. So, including this treasure hunt or this monthly loyalty member sample pack. So there's so many things that are like kind of uh, have happened in retail that I feel like can just be like built upon. So like Trader Joe's, whenever I go there with my kids, they're hunting for the turtle. I don't know if that happens in every Trader Joe's everywhere, but there's a stuffed turtle that they keep moving every day. And if you find the turtle, you can go to the um, customer service desk and get a prize. 
So it's almost like, like what is the beauty version of that? And then at Hot Topic, which is obviously like I go shopping with my kids to get a preteen teen store. They do these amazing bundles of like a whole bunch of random things that preteens love and they put them in black bags and you get like this really like amazing and super reduced price on whatever's inside, but you don't know what's inside, but there's some, such a like a fun aspect to the mystery. Um, it feels like treasure. So, you know, retailers have been doing things like this. It's what, you know, beauty has to find, find their story. And we're so excited to work with our retail clients to help them create, you know, what are these big, exciting loyalty opportunities for their customers. And we also thought of reimagining the way that we have celebrity and influencer appearances in store. So of course we want to make sure we're adhering to the CDC guidelines and uh, ensuring that it's not these large groups of individuals that are coming into the space, but how great would it be if we have a select group of loyal members, maybe it's that top tier consumers of the bricks and mortar, and they have the chance to have an intimate experience to meet their favorite celebrity or influencer in store. And then of course, um, in the store, you'd be able to amplify that across all your social media channels. So those individuals walk away with an incredible experience Experience. They feel special. You know, the store values me as a customer and you get to, as the store, you get to amplify that experience across all your social channels. So other viewers at home can say, I want to be that next person that has this very cool and very unique experience. So we really do believe that we can host an event for, let's say, 10 like top customers and um, keep that safety element going. The store is closed to other customers during this time, so it feels really exclusive. Have that celebrity or influencer there. And we can still like take pictures with her. We're just not hugging her, right? We're standing on the other side of the flower wall, right, to get that social media moment. Um, and then I love, Natalie, that, you know, just because it's an event for 10 local people doesn't mean that only 10 people see it, right? If we amplify it in a strong way on social, millions of people get to see it. That's right. And lastly, this was an idea during our brainstorming session that got us all really excited. <laughs> and as me as a, as a consumer, uh, I can't wait for this idea to come to life. So we all know about in-store, if you purchase products, there are these opportunities where you can have a professional makeup artist on site who can help you with the application process. Um, in today's world, not so much the case, but how great would it be that when you do go in-store and you purchase these products, if you meet a certain threshold, you have the opportunity to schedule a virtual training with a makeup artist or a hairstylist on staff, and that person virtually can show you how to apply the right smoky eye or how to, how to really style your hair so you have the perfect waves. So having that personalized one-on-one -on -one opportunity with a professional after you've had that in-store purchase is uh, an experience that we think will translate really well for the end consumer. And that's Amanda Thiessen, one of our um, favorite friend of agency makeup artists um, who does a ton of virtual demos on her social. Okay, so now I'm gonna change, um, I'm gonna like really flip the script here because you're all here thinking about store, in-store, in-store. And I'm saying, okay, of course, we have to focus on in-store, in-store, in-store because so much has changed. But because so much has changed in the real world, we need to compensate in the digital world for these shifts in, in experience. So even if we like go full throttle and do everything that's on our list and make the bar happen and you know the Tom Cruise character, she's having so much fun like fixing foundations for you, um, we still need the online experience to be enhanced to really fill that void. So, um, I'm going to like, I'm going to be really annoying here, but um, we have to compensate for these changes and we need to do it on our own direct to the We need to do it on our Amazon pages with our partner retailers.com. If you're a salon, you need to tackle this. If you're a spa, you need to tackle this. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about show packaging functionality. And I'll show you what that means. Show product texture, show product functionality. Show, oh, this is a repeat. Let's say it again. Show packaging functionality. Show application on skin. Show removal of product from skin if it's like makeup or a mask. Express the science. Highlight your testimonials. Present the research. Leverage your experts. 
So what does this all mean? Like, look at these images. Like, I see product texture. I see the goop. I can get a sense of it, if it's very sheer, if it's very thick. Is it rich? Is it a deep color? Is it a sheer color? I'm showing you how the packaging functions, right? I'm showing you the applicators. I'm showing you the squirts. I'm showing you that there is no applicator. You just have to stick your finger in there, right? And I'm really giving you a sense of what it's like to experience the packaging. So don't forget, you know, um, in the slide Elisa showed, we're showing you the packaging in store, but it's behind um, glass, right? You're not going to be able to touch it. So we need to compensate for that by giving as much detail as we can online. We need to show how the product applies, how to use it before and afters, right? Like really show skin, show close up. We really want to go macro with this um, because we want people to kind of like sense it and feel it, even though they're not really touching it in that moment. Also online, we need to show the science. So science videos, infographics, like whatever we can use to create a sense of like, oh, I understand it's not just a moisturizer. It's a amazing moisturizer. It has an XYZ in it. You'll have to really invest in diving deeper into the storytelling and being having a more rich experience online for the customer to understand why this product is different and why she needs this. And then let's tell the story that other customers have told for us, right? Like share testimonials, um, look into your reviews, pull out those great reviews, um, celebrate them, honor them. Um, any of your consumer research and feedback from surveys, um, like bring that to life, find a great way to paint a picture around um, this product's success and why people love it. Um, and this needs to be for every single product. And then of course, leverage your experts to enhance the shopping. So your dermatologists, estheticians, hairstylists, makeup artists, wellness experts, whatever type of expert makes sense for the um, tone and purpose of your brand, bring them forward onto every single product page, onto every single digital touch point, make sure that they're helping to tell that story. Oh, so then we're at the end. So, um, you know, we have like a few minutes left, Eleni. I think we should see um, if we can answer any of the questions from our attendees. Yeah, um, this is a pretty big question, so it might take up our remaining <laughs> time. Um, maybe I'll start with you, Jody. How can I get my retail partners to get on board with these ideas? Oh my God, so this is such a good question and it's sort of like my soapbox or something right now. Um, you know, I, I've been in the industry for a long time. Um, I've been watching the industry as a customer and as a marketer and wondering um, why are things the way they are? And um, I actually think, you know, what, what COVID is doing is forcing everybody to, everybody to revisit like the, the current rules. And I'm hoping that many retailers and brands will actually start to rethink this and rewrite the rules. So I'm really hoping that um, brands will be able to have really open and creative conversations with their retail partners around how to tell these stories. Um, and it's possible that the brands are gonna be willing to move faster on this than the retail partners. Um, you know, hopefully there'll be some of the big retailers out there at least one of them is going to be a leader in um, pushing this dialogue forward, um, really supporting their staff and their customers and making sure that there's a safe and um, comfortable and easy way to access products in stores. But it's going to take a lot of dialogue. And I would say if you're a brand working with a retail partner who's not being responsive, like just like keep going at it. Like don't give up on this conversation. Don't accept the status quo. Um, be annoying because um, if they're not going to innovate with you, then let's go find a retailer that, that's willing to innovate. Um, so I would say like be persistent and aggressive in this and continually think about what's best for your brand and your customer. And if the retailer is not willing to try it with you, then try it on your .com and then go back to the retailer and say, look at how well this worked to make this happen and store for me. Great. Okay, well that puts us at our four o'clock mark. So anybody whose question we didn't get to answer, we'll make sure we follow up with you after the event. And we got a question about the deck. Yes, we will share the deck with you after this as well. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you everyone for joining. And if you have questions, please reach out to us. You know, we're really here to support our clients, um, the retail clients, the brand clients, and make sure that um, everybody can um, have success together um, as we help to service the customer in this new world. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.